And welcome back. Well, our next guest struggled to breathe, sleep, and exercise for 25 years. Yeah, he tried surgery once. It didn't help. Finally, an in-office procedure called balloon sinuplasty did the job. And joining us now is Jeff Lovelin, along with Dr. Mother Candula with the Sinus Center at Advent to tell us a little bit more about this story. It's a 25 years, a lot of people are going to say, oh my gosh. Yeah, can we just get a close-up of you breathing? <laughs> yeah. oh, how does that feel? It feels good. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's a long time to not be feeling all that good and have trouble breathing, sleeping, and exercising. Yeah, you should ask my wife about that, too. She's <laughs> it's Well, what it comes down to is, you know, 25 years ago, it was quite interesting because when you did the surgery, I was out for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And so that puts a little bit of a fear in you after you've done that a couple times and you just say, that's why it took so long, you know, mm -hmm. you just don't want to go back. Well, let's talk about balloon sinuplasty because mm -hmm. you talked about it before helping people and really making a difference. Um, it, it sounds like pe the, the recovery time is so much faster with this. So how does it work and who's a good candidate for it? Um, it really depends. So how it works is basically opening up the sinus passages. And what we do is use a tiny balloon. Do we have a video or not? We do. Okay. Yeah. But basically use a, a little a tiny balloon through the nose up in the sinus passages. This is showing how it's done. <laughs> we can do this in the office now. Nowadays, this is actually exactly what uh, Jeff had done. He was kind of uh, not paying attention as much as I was during this process, but All we're right. using a little, li <laughs> little light of wire. We, we find this natural sinus passageway, and once we find that right spot, we put a little balloon in over that wire, and we inflate that to expand the opening. So it's just, it, it, you know, what, what it's doing is just getting the sinus openings open so that they can drain properly, and then air can get up in those areas Does properly. Does it stay open, though? It stays though, open. So okay. that's a really common question. It's a good question. Those are bony. When, when you're looking at those pictures, that's a bony opening that gets gets further opened. Okay. So we go, go to about six millimeters, a natural opening. If if somebody's healthy is about two millimeters. If somebody's not healthy and not having uh, proper sinus flow is less than a millimeter. So taking it to six millimeters is a night and day difference. And it's it's you know in the office nowadays very low key, which is a big change from you know how things were done in the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And specifically, when you evaluated Jeff, what did you find? So he he had had previous surgeries. So you know so we see some of those changes both on in real life and on his CT scan. And what we found is he had some key areas of blockage both through the breathing passages and the sinus passages. And, you know, we talked it through, basically, as far as what the options were moving forward from there, whether we just deal with it, whether we do the in-office procedure or, you know, the, more of the traditional sinus surgery sides of things. And, and uh, Jeff decided to go with the in-office. Mm -hmm. See, and I think there, there are certain things about having an in-office procedure that sound pretty good, but also could be a little bit scary, too. <laughs> what, what were your thoughts about that? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a small guy, and I work out, and, and I was <laughs> scared to death. So I even tell my friends, you know, when I see them, you know, and, I, and, and family members that are saying, I've got a problem, you know, and they want to talk more about it. I'm a big chicken and going in and getting anything done and I'm scared of needles and I'm scared of all that. I mean, I've got more fears than I ever thought I did until you go in. But when I went in, it was, it was so fast, so easy. And when I was finished and came back out, I just basically pinched my nose sat down my wife came in she says i can't believe you're finished already i said me neither and i said i can actually breathe right now oh, right away right away it was instant even with you know even after going in i was that night when i went home my wife said it was the first time that i slept through the night without snoring oh i bet you felt so much better well yeah you, you when you sleep i woke up the next day i didn't have bags under my eyes i didn't feel like you know i didn't feel tired felt more alert and then after a couple of days i went back to work out you know, when, you know, you're supposed to breathe out of your nose, breathe in, and then yeah. breathe out through your mouth. Well, <laughs> you have to breathe out and in through your mouth, so it was really difficult for me for a lot of, a lot of things. How do you feel about that? I mean, that's like life changing. Yeah. Someone suffers for 25 years. I mean, it affects relationships. It affects mm -hmm. how you can sleep. It affects how you can breathe, whether or not you can exercise, mm -hmm. and to be able to provide instant relief. It's cool. I mean, it really is. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's nice. It's nice to have these options. I mean, this isn't necessarily the right fit for everybody, but it's. I've been. I, I've been surprised with how well people do both having it done and then on the back end. You know, it's it's been really remarkable. And are people awake for? and do yep. you do any sort of anesthetic? Yeah, we, so we numb it up. So we, we, we do a local anesthetic. Some folks will choose to take a sedative before they have it done, mm -hmm. like a Valium, just to kind of yeah. take the edge <laughs> off, which is <laughs> fine. That's a personal <laughs> preference, and either way is fine. Folks you know, who choose not to do it, they'll, they'll tend to do fine. Folks who know themselves and kind of feel like, boy, I think I'm going to need a little, <laughs> little uh, well, so sedation, then <laughs> that's fine. And, and it's not you're not asleep for it, and uh, but it's very comfortable. It's, it's really not a big deal as far as having it done. Mm -hmm. And his story is that 
that typical, the success rate? Yeah, I mean, it, it tends to be very, very successful. I mean, we all pretty much always are going to move the ball forward. It, we, you know, we want to over, get over the goal line, and I think most of the times we do that, you know, again, it's it's me trying to figure out what the right fit for somebody is, and them trying to figure out, is this a good, good you know, deal for them? Mm -hmm. You'd obviously recommend this because your recovery was so quick. Um, it's, and this works even for people like Jeff who've had surgery or tried a lot of different options it can, in the past. Yeah, absolutely. You know, certainly folks who've never had anything done, there certainly can be candidates. Folks who've had things done, then they can be candidates. And it really doesn't change what we do. It's just a matter of, of evaluating it properly and figuring out, you know, again, what's the right fit and what's going to really help the cause. Yeah. All right. Let's all do it together. One more big <laughs> breath in. Mm, that's nice, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, here's the information for Advent so that you can contact them if you have any information. Yep. Here's questions. the Sinus Center at Advent. They're located on North <coughs> Mayfair Road in Wauwatosa. The phone number to make an appointment or have your questions mm -hmm. answered is 414 771 6780 or the website is advent.md. Great to have you both here. Great Breathe in easy. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Up next on the show, how to have that.